Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Terminator Genesis movie thoughts. Starting with the last minute notes. When the... Yeah, early on in this, I realized that within the first 45 minutes or so, you see a, excuse me, T-800 get, excuse me, you know, stopped twice. And that's, you know, I mean, when you see in the, in the trailers, you know, I've been waiting for you, and he comes and he shoots. You know, we do get, a, you know, a decent brawl between the two, but then it ends pretty quickly. And that's kind of, that's, that's the downside to this whole cool thing of, oh, showing up prepared, you know. They're stopping the T-800 right after it landed, basically. Because, yeah, you know, and she pulls out the anti-tank gun. Yeah, that's gonna stop him. That's just plain and simple. Or, you know, anti-vehicle, okay. I, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. It, I'm not 100% up to date, but I'm almost certain that I fired a predecessor of that exact gun in red you know, Red Orchestra, you know, when firing at tanks. So, so yeah, it's, it's, go straight through vehicle, yeah. And it's, it's cool, you know, it's cool to see a T-800B, although I guess they have a heart there, it's, you know, I don't know. Anyway, and then, you know, Kyle also gets to destroy it. I also have no idea how the, the, you know, it melted to just the skeleton there. The the second, I, didn't he just like you know shoot a grenade at it or something? Why did it melt the whole thing? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's probably because they wanted that visual in there. You know, the the yeah melting the everything but the the skeleton also. Yeah. And it's it's the kind of thing where you're. Yeah, it's it's just it's a little bit anticlimactic, you know. And then the T one thousand is dealt with so so early on as well, and it's it makes a lot of sense, you know. And, and at least in both, they did do a little twist on it where you think, oh, okay, now it's gone. And then nope, it came back with, which is what we want from a Terminator, you know. It just stopped. No, nope, it came back, you know. It's, in in the immortal words of Brad Fidel, if he gets up one more time, I'm leaving. It's a, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a letdown, especially with the T-1000, which, when you've watched the whole movie, you realize the one reason the T-1000 was in this was to set up Arnie being upgraded. That was, that was it entirely. You could cut him out as a character, and, and... Yeah, the movie would just be out a few action scenes like that. That's that's it, you know. But with him, you know, he he reactivates the T eight hundred, which tells us, oh, those can kind of mix. You know, they can work together. He can reactivate uh, one of those, and then you know, when near the end, when you see, oh, they, had, you know, you know, when when John is there, you know, we see the the photos thingy, yeah liquid metal and you know they point to is that dangerous not without a chip so yeah the moment that he gets blown into the you know he comes back as and, and that is a cool reveal you know he <laughs> opens the door and then he comes in and yeah it's it's arnie you know as a t1000 and you know it's it's also you know it had that thing with the the hand that kept cramping up and yeah, now he's he's better. Now he's you know he's he's maybe still old-ish, but he's definitely not obsolete. And yeah, that was literally it. If they hadn't had the the T1000 there at the beginning, then you wouldn't have had those 
things and and you know if if Arnold came back as T one thousand there at the end and people hadn't watched the the second movie they'd be like what what is going on here you know so yeah and and I will say this does pretty good at reintroducing pretty much every major element of the first two movies and actually telling its own story and not getting really confusing and such but yeah it's a yeah, I briefly on the T1000, you know, it was quite clever that they had like acid, I I think, over and and you know, she walks out and drips and oh, spraying on, you know, and and at first you don't know, quite know what was that? And and then, you know, when he Yeah. yeah briefly yeah, and then, you know, Nice Try shoots all that, and then acid rains down on him, and then, yeah, he can't reform because he keeps getting, yeah, he, he keeps getting melted again, so, and, and then he jumps out at the T1, you know, at, at Arnie, and then he grabs him and holds him out, and that's, yeah, pretty great, and, and then again, we have this shot of him with, with just the arm, which, of course, he makes sure to lose in that climactic fight, so, yeah the yeah which which of course takes place in you know a machine something or other place you know yeah anyway yeah we the yeah i i i realized that it's been done a lot of times and it's maybe difficult to to maybe put a new spin on, but I'm sorry, the scene of the two Kyle Reese's standing there and just saying, no, it's me, actually, he's the one, I'm sorry, that, that was exactly like every other scene I've seen of those, ever, and Charmed had one of those, that was in 98, I'm sorry, but color me unimpressed by that one part of the movie. I, again, I love this movie, but yeah, I'm sorry that, but I, I do think is, you know, Kieran, she, she shoots and how, how did, you know, how did you know that that was me? Well, I was pretty sure. You would have shot me? I was pretty sure. <laughs> you know, that was good. And I mean, she maybe should have shot, if she had actually shot Kyle on the foot, that would have made, that would have really slowed them down. She should probably have just shot, I don't know, the, you know, grazed somewhere that isn't too noticeable and isn't too, like, yeah, too, too major, I don't know, maybe like the, the side, I guess, if, yeah, something like that, but, but, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny, but the, I did like how the, you know, Skynet ultimately was just one person, that it's a, you know, yeah, you know, and, and we, we sort of almost see that, we, you know, when, when he attacks John at the very start, it's not a kind of, you know, this one agent got, you know, there, there is this kind of finality or, or, I don't know, yeah, you know, it's a, there's, there's, there's something to it where you, you really feel like this is, you know, yeah, this is, this is the head honcho, and you know, he, he, is that thing, you know, every time he ages, you know, he, he evolves, or, you know, and, and the clock is, you know, closer. And, and then ultimately, Kyle sees, you're the one, you're the one who attacked John, and yeah. And the, yeah, and the, the first two movies, James Cameron in general, likes to comment with his films on how we how we use technology what what does it what is it in our lives and such and like with scream 4 this one really did 
update that and go and say, well, today, and yeah, to, to basically the, the, the cloud kind of thing with, yeah, and yeah, they, they totally would call it Genesis. That's, yeah. And they, you know, they, they do point out in the film, you know, some, some have talked about the, the military in use, you know, the military use of Genesis and such. And, and really great, you know, you know, this is 2017, Miles and Danny Dyson. So, yeah, Danny's a grown man and he's, you know, he's pretty much in charge of this thing and, yeah. That was quite clever, and yeah, you know all the the little things where we see people like you know talking on you know the the doctor guy talking on the phone with the you know little thing, and you know we see the guard on his smartphone, and yeah. Now, I like the. I suppose I should say. I realize, but don't too much mind because of all the this adds to it, that essentially this movie does boil down to Sarah and, you know, at least one ally go to Cyberdyne, blow it up, and hope that the future has been saved. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly, and, and if they hadn't added all this character and clever twists on elements that were already there and yeah then I would be you know crying foul then it would be a complete ripoff but yeah as it is yeah you know it, it does so much with the material and the I suppose, and and you know, with the ending, we have you know, it is indeed a, a time travel paradox. With you know, only at the end does adult Kyle tell kid Kyle, say into the mirror, say to yourself, Genesis is Skynet. When it counts down, Judgment Day begins. You know, because that was how he knew at the very start when when he first travels, and and I also do think that was quite clever that as he travels, he sees John be attacked, because it's like, oh no, he can't do anything about it. And then you know, when he arrives, he says, I I don't know. I saw him be attacked, but it was too late for me to do anything. And yeah, that was really clever. And yeah, and, and that was also a good way to, you know, when when we first see him do that, you know, when, when we see John be attacked there in the opening, and then John comes back, and then when he sort of heals the scars, and, you know, you you connect the two, you know, it's not like, what? Where, where did this come from? It's, oh, that's what Skynet, the man, was doing to him. And I quite liked the various stops along the way that they had to make when the when they they show up naked on the you know oh they good thing it was a bad bomb no no it's not a bomb see they came out of the sphere it's it's a time travel you know and they're like you know she's being you know the having the stuff you know are you sure you don't want you know you know sedative to just the air and of course she doesn't she's she might have to fight in a few minutes she's not if she can't use her shoulder properly properly she might not be able to shoot are you crazy no of course not. it's better to just do what she said you know and the, you know, and he does it, and she still does show pain. You know, there's, underneath the exterior, there is some humanity, but, you know, still a, yeah, she's, she's, she's a badass, but she is still human. I, I love when she plays the music, and she sits there, and says, yeah, it's great. And, 
Yeah, and and how she and Pops clearly care about each other is really great. It's actually, I don't think, no, nobody actually refers to him as Guardian in the film. They, they do in the, in the featurettes and such, but, you know, in the film they call him Pops, or, yeah. So, but, but, yeah, the, you know, he clearly cares when he's, you know, I don't understand this, why, when, Sorry, I just turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into, uh, I don't know, Woody Allen. Yeah, the 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 you know, I do not understand why do you hold on to someone that you have to let go of. You know the, and and then afterwards I'm gonna be fine. I just have to you know I'll take the long road. And then the moment she's gone, just oh you know you really feel for him and you know and and also her. Yeah, it's it's really, yeah, <laughs> and that bit with you know near the end with, you know, we we have to go back. We have to go back from Sarah. She's gone. No, I, Sarah. She's dead. Sarah. He's dead. I know. I mean the part. We can't leave any here. We'll you know pollute the timeline, and then you know for saying that you know. He really did care about you, you know, and, and the, the, yeah, that was, that was great. And Kyle and Pops gradually getting to life, and, and they're at the end, you know, with the kiss, and then he's there and smiling. It's, that's that's disturbing. You'll get used to it, you know, and yeah, at, you know, at first it's like, can he really protect Sarah? Or are both of them saying about the other? So, yeah, that was that was a nice, but but yeah, you know, the <laughs> I love when they when they both pick up on oh okay they're doing you know we're, we're arguing so that we can do the the thing and that again we've seen that so many times but here it's with two people who should know each other but who currently are kind of arguing and such and it works you know it it feels fresh. Then you know, oh, it's just and you know they get the. You sounded really convinced. Yeah, but I didn't mean most of it. You know, it's, yeah. And you know when they get stuff at the police and bad cops, bad cops. You know, playing the music, and then you see them, and and she's just tiny with the. Again, I'm short. I can make fun of it. With with you know at at the. When when they're having the the pictures taken and and Arnie is just staring, you know, and you don't talk much, do you? And it, I'm not even sure this guy speaks understands English, and then he recognizes the voice of uh, O'Brien, and then you know, gets up, oh, the, uh, and you know, he he can't see through. It's it's you know, it's it's one way, and yeah, that's that's great, and and the thing with you know. He smashes off the the you know the the door, and then you know he says, "Oh yeah, that'll that thing will knock a door right off <laughs> for people who can't do that themselves." <laughs> as as quite good, and I liked the you know the bit with your your some thing in your oh this you know the the two of them they're like, you know, or at least one of them is, is the Terminator or something, and then suddenly it turns out to be the, the female Asian cop. That was, that was really great. Great misdirect there, because you, again, they knew that we'd be looking for that. We'd be trying to say, oh, it's definitely that guy. Watch out for him, you know, and they did it. They, they, they got one over on us, just like in T2, and that's very impressive. And the... I suppose that more or less covers those scenes. I liked how this, <laughs> you know, right from the start, people who watched the first movie know that. Kyle is going to be John's father, and the moment that they arrive, you know, Sarah already knows because she's, you know, she's been preparing for this for years, 
And, you know, she, she's like, seriously, this is the guy who's going to be the father of, you know, excuse me. And, and, and Guardian keeps, you know, that you will mate with him and <laughs> never, never say the word mate again, you know, and, and it's, it's totally, it's like one of those, you know, father, you know, father, son, or father, daughter kind of things where they're talking, yeah, especially father, daughter, you know, where, where the father is like talking about, you know, who she should and shouldn't see and, you know, who would or wouldn't make a good long time romantic interest and, and things like that. And yeah, it's, it's really, really nicely done. And Kyle doesn't know because John didn't tell him. So it's like, you know, <laughs> Kyle and and Kyle is like why didn't you tell me and and you know and then when I was like you impregnate me then you die protecting me and our boy is the leader of the future how do you start that conversation you know she's got a point and and I was also really glad to see that that was something I was really wondering going into this will Kyle live? And that is, again, a very interesting, you know, now we have, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to do with the next two, but I'm interested. And it seems like maybe they changed the future. They, certainly John was stopped. And that was also great how they, you know, the, they had that thing of, well, you know, it has to you know, when it separates, it has to come back. So if we can separate it enough, you know, and he has that glove thing that he keeps smashing him in the face with it separate, that was, that was great. And then they're at the end, you know, completely, yeah. And, you know, of course, Pop's head get gets knocked into the T-1000 juice, and yeah. And the... And, and I do think it was, you know, clever enough that the only way that they could operate the that old time machine that they built was to stop a T-800 and that meant waiting until 84 and so you know Kyle coming along was really well yeah it was necessary but it or at some point she would have to meet Kyle she, she had to meet Kyle Reese in 84 so that they could have the you know, they could, you know, yeah, have the, the future savior of mankind together. But certainly they couldn't travel, you know, yeah, that, that was basically everything they were doing before that was just waiting for the time when they'd be ready to, you know, they were, they were luring the T-1000, you know, he'll be here in, in approximately 35 seconds or less <laughs> and yeah so you know they stop the T-1000 they get the T-800 chip and use it and I love you know Kyle goes in and says you have you know we have to do this right and Sarah pulls a gun on him that was a great dramatic scene. as if you had asked me you know any point in in you know the last few decades if you had asked me will Sarah Connor ever point a gun at Kyle Reese and genuinely be ready to I would not have thought so and it yeah it is great and, and that's the thing that's something you really have to do when you're working with these you know, we've, we've seen these before, we, you know, these are two iconic movies, and the first one is 30 years old. You have to actually add to that, and they really did, you know, I, the, yeah, the image of Sarah Connor, and, and it, it also, it really highlights, she's not very tall, and he's, he's, decent height you know 
and she's staying there, and not for a second are you like giggling, oh, look at her, you know, little, little puny, heart. no, you're like, she's gonna, she, she'll pull that trigger, she, we, we've already seen her shoot, you know, she's, by then, she's fired like, I don't know, a couple dozen bullets, at least, actually, she, she used the, anyway, yeah, she's, she's clearly capable with a gun, and this is what it's all about. This is, you know, this time travel, this particular, you know, try a time travel has to work. And, yeah, she's, but, but, yeah, and, you know, he says, you know, we have to take, we have to go to 2017, not 1997. And, yeah, it was, and, and that's a very nice, clever way of putting it in the present and then, you know, a few years later and not really saying like, you know, in a few years we'll have, you know, a hundred, you know, that was kind of silly in, two, in, in Terminator 3, I'm sorry, it, uh, I'm, saying, I'm not sorry, that was stupid and yeah, in, in this, it's just, it's two years in the future and really what, what you're, what you're especially looking at is this kind of, you know, cloud software kind of thing, and it apparently has kind of a mind, and yeah, it, it comments on, you know, what we do with technology and how much we trust technology, and yeah, you know, today if you ask anyone should a computer be in control of, like, you know, nuclear launch codes, we'll be like, wait, Terminator, no, they definitely shouldn't. But yeah, we let them run every other aspect of our lives. It's true. So that's that's a really good point, and a really clever, and and that's that's when the there's that's when it's called for to do another of these movies is when you have something like that to put in there and to to do something with. Now. And I and we didn't really see, you know, the the past or present be altered. And you know, and and this is not as epic a fun timeline sequel as Back to the Future Two, although that was the inspiration for this. But that really, you know, it, it pretty much couldn't have been that would, yeah, not, not with these movies. Now, you know, we see that John has extremist powers, you know, pulling that pipe thing under the, you know, the, the school bus, making it, you know, and I quite like how to get onto the school bus, he grabs a motorcycle and you know, he he lands on top of it, and then we see the, you know, the, the motorcycle crash off, and the, that was a nice little nod to the others, where, you know, yeah, it's, you know, we have, in, in the second one, we have Arnie driving off something and then landing with a motorcycle, so, yeah, and then again, you know, it takes it, it takes that and does something new with it, now he's not just landing, he's landing on top of a school bus, and we again have a truck, you know, rolling over and that kind of thing. And yeah, you know, it's it's these kinds of things that, yeah, it and and it's you know, it it the the Golden Gate Bridge scene really shows just how effective John is at slowing them down. And you might say that, you know, that scene really, you know, grinds the, the overall plot to a halt because then they have to deal with, you know, police and such. It's basically the same thing as in the first with when Kyle is brought in for questioning. And in the second one, with the, you know, yeah, the, the breaking out of, of Sarah Connor, as well as, really, once they, you know, meet up with Enrique, then it's just, well, what are we going to do now? 
And then, you know, with, with, the, with the nightmare in comes the, you know, the, the plot comes back in. But so, so, you know, you could make that argument about this film, but it would be the same with the, with the first two, I would argue. I was really glad that this one did not try to force in a Silverman cameo or such. I, I love Earl Bowen. And I, I don't begrudge him appearing in the third one, but I don't remember exactly what words Rod Hilton of a bridge of the editing room.com used, but it was something like Earl Bowen makes a short and depressing cameo, something like that. Yes, I, I would agree. I feel they did well in this ad when they escape John. It makes sense, you know. It, it makes you know they they use that. I, I don't remember what it's called, but the thing in the hospital, you know, cranked it all the way, and he got got sucked up against the thing, you know. Yeah, that it it makes sense that that would, you know, sufficiently pull at the yeah, and. Yeah, through through and through, it, you know. Also, when I'll be back, and then you know, excuse me, you know, he basically dive bombs with using himself the the helicopter that John's on, and you know, and their helicopter was pretty messed up, and they still pull off that move, and then you know, and yeah, and. This one does put a little bit of imagery to the <laughs> kind of Holocaust imagery that I, you know, I, in preparation for this, I rewatched the, you know, I, I don't have copies of the third or fourth movie. The fourth movie does have, you know, the movie clips online, you know, found a bunch, there, there was like 10 clips of Terminator Salvation. I had already watched it, you know, years back. I watched it in the theater when it came out. Having rewatched just the clips, I feel like I pretty much watched the, the movie. I mean, there were a few things here and there that they didn't, but yeah, it was, it was, anyway. Um, the... Yeah, when when Spoonie, you know, reviews the the salvation the movie, he talks about how it, you know, yeah, it has a Holocaust imagery, and it made him unco uncomfortable. And I agree that it was made very visual in Salvation. But if you listen to Kyle's description in the very first movie, it's it's right there. It's it's you know he doesn't use the word Holocaust, but you know the yeah what he's describing is basically the holocaust and it's not like i mean that's what james cameron wrote you know he i mean he knew when he was writing that in 1994 you know he he knew i am writing this i am definitely going to evoke holocaust imagery so just that was always there you know that was not something that <sighs> mcg and his Horrible, horrible ilk put in. I quite like that in this we do see them take the the you know the time machine place because that was a cut scene from the second movie, which I, I what was it? They they felt like it was communicated like we we understood. We didn't need to see it, I think was the, the thing of it. So, you know, it's it's not even part of the director's cut, which Kyle Reese is, and if if he wasn't yeah, and and he was cut because well, people who might not have watched the first movie won't know what he is. But but he's Michael Bean. You don't cut Michael Bean. Anyway, yeah, the I I thought that that was a a good. I I don't remember exact. I don't remember everything about the about Salvation. But I don't think we saw them take a time lapse at any point in that movie. And yeah, it just it made a ton of sense to have it here. You know, in Terminator 2, we don't really need to see it happen because the the future scenes in Terminator 2, it's just 
you know, we're winning the war. This is, you know, some of what the war looked like. We did, you know, see some, yeah, you know, the, they're still kicking ass, some, the, the hunter killers. And then, you know, we're, so we're told, you know, this is the, the future, but John Connor will make sure that we win it. But the real battle happens tonight. You know, like, like in, you know, the first movie says that, but it, you, you know, in the opening, it's just, te you know, text. And then we see some flashbacks to that. That was the budget that he had. You know, the second one, you know, it's just the budget is right there on screen. You know, it opens with a full robotic T-800 skeleton, you know. So, yeah. The second one didn't really need that scene because the future was not something we delved into. This one does. And I really love that it delves into the future because you know, when Salvation did it, it sucked, and this shows that it can still be... I maintain that we should not see a full movie in the future. The, the future war should always be short sequences, because otherwise we will just become too used to... Leave them wanting more. That's... that's it was brilliantly done in the first movie, because we just want, we want to see more. How, just, you know, how, how did he survive that? How did he get... With, you know, and, and, and we just barely accept that humanity won the war and then right there in the second one it's like well yeah yeah we're winning anyway yeah it's you know in this one because that's where it starts that's where it starts for kyle and we get his you know most of what we get from kyle is him as an adult following john but we we really get a sense of you know all that you know they tried to make moonshine but blew up and burned off their you know yeah <laughs> that's that's funny and yeah it's it's a yeah it it that that just really worked and then we see them take it because that's part of the story that's part of how Kyle ended up in eighty four and kind of what we knew but hadn't seen you know with him in the future with John when that ends we get into what we haven't seen and what we thought we knew and yeah that's very very nicely done I feel like the I suppose with every right from the first trailer that I saw, I was like, I need to see this. I mean, I mean, I knew, yeah, they're coming out with an Alex Romeo, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I. I let myself get fooled into caring for both three and four. And with this one, I was like, yeah, this, I'm sure it's, yeah. And then I watched this trailer and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I can kind of recognize that. That's from the first movie. That's from the second movie. Whoa. You know, to, like, like James Cameron said, then, you know, suddenly there's, you know, it, it turns. And I was like, right, right from the first turn in the very first trailer I was like I need to watch this movie this is this is the Terminator sequel that I did not realize that I wanted to see and every trailer every featurette coming out just made me more and more excited for it and it lived up to it it's it's really really incredible and yeah now Just to briefly, I they they do some sexualize Sarah in this, but I'm really glad that they didn't do the Terminator Three thing of you know I mean straight up bring in you know a supermodel and you know I, to be fair and I will want to say this of Kristen Logan everything I've seen her in she really she does what she can and she she can do some really great 
if Terminator 3 was not a Terminator movie, I would like it. No, that's a straight up lie. No, but her performance is great. It's not her fault that it's just there for, you know, so that, you know, oh, look, we can put a woman's ass straight up on there. On the, did, was that really, like, I, I, I want to address the rest of my, my, my brethren, my male straight brethren. Are we truly so insecure about our masculinity and our, our straight, our, our, our sexual, the, that for every couple of male asses on a screen, we need for there to also be a female ass. Are, are, are there not enough naked women in movies? Are there not enough sexy women in action movies? I just, that was such, yeah. And, and then, you know, they have her inflate the breasts and the whole thing. But, but yeah, Christina Logan does great. If you, if you just look at, at her performance, how much she communicates with just her eyes and facial, you know, yeah, you know, it's with, with both her and, you know, Seven of Nine, great acting. And, you know, with, with Seven, it's also generally a great character in addition to being sexy. And I do, you know, I don't really think that it's, it's commendable that, you know, that is also gone for, although I do still don't really think, I do still don't think that either character needed to be sexy, which again, is not saying that it's, it's not, it's not about not casting beautiful women. It's just how you play it, you might say. It's whether or not the... Yeah, you know, it's, it's whether or not they're, they're put in these kinds of situations. And yeah, the, the TX using sex appeal to, you know, get... Yeah, you know, take over people's excuse me, yeah, to, so she could, yeah, get someone's vehicle and don't get me started on electronically controlling mechanical cars, yeah, and the, you know, from, from some of the trailers, I had gotten the idea that Sarah had sent off John to, you know, to be raised at the military, you know, to to kind of get him out of out of harm's way or or something along those lines, and that like being raised by the military made him like war crazy or you know, war hungry or something. But in the trailers, what I actually saw was young Kyle Reese being talked to briefly by Sarah before adult Kyle Reese talked to yeah, and. I was really glad that this one did not go in, you know, to try to argue these really silly philosophical ideas that Terminator 2 did, which, which just briefly, you know, the, the thing of, you know, if a Terminator can value human life, maybe we can too. Oh, that's deep. That's deep, James. No, wait, no, it isn't, because humanity valuing human lives is really not a problem. Humanity when when human beings find out a lot of people are dying, we immediately try to do something about it. It's not that we don't care. That it's not that we don't value life. It's that, in general, I don't think there's much of a problem with empathy. I think there's more of a problem with ability to deal with it without... I, when, when you look at the way people, you know, choose what to, to buy and choose who to support and such, I would argue the majority of people today are, you know, have plenty of empathy. It's it's more difficult to, you know, to find, you know, places that, you know, they'll make our 
shoes that don't use slave labor and such and such. It's more that we don't have enough options. And that is not because humanity doesn't value lives. It's because the few people who sit and truly make those decisions don't care about it. It's that they lack empathy, not that a sort of, not that not humanity in general. And then, you know, the, the Terminator, you know, this reprogrammed killing machine is clearly the best father for John, except for the fact that it doesn't have emotions, it can't actually, you know, yeah, it, they did an experiment, James, did you know that? Did you know that, James? Can I call you James? I'm going to call you James. I'm going to call you Jim. They did experiments, and it turned out that monkeys, given the option, would actually rather have they they've done experiments they 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 you know when when you look at what what we really want from from a parent no terminator is not really going to cut it it's just it's just not and you know it's it's, it's in your nature to destroy yourself no no it really isn't it's in our nature to get like overly worked up about like we can get a little too eager to you know to create something powerful and that can lead to but you know we're not trying to, when when you get right down to again when when someone has a lot of other people killed it's that this one person really is, you know, messed up about, like, you know, whether it be a, a general who sends out and just, you know, okay, you're going to win a war, how about you do it with as little casualty, you know, as few casualties as you possibly could, you know, and yeah, so, so that kind of, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's again. It's it's. We really don't particularly. We we we're not destructive. We we can be careless, but not dis, We're not destructive by our nature. That's just silly. And the the thing of you know Sarah saying you know you you don't know how it truly feels to create life and you know sort of saying you know. You know, you boys in your war toys, and I suppose it's just talking about like, yeah, let's let's go with they're just you know this is just about you know guys who create water because if you say you know every man on planet Earth is like you know jealous of the ability in inherently jealous of the ability to create life within our own body, I wholeheartedly disagree. We all have a drive to reproduce, to to have children, um, among other things, and not just because it's fun to do. You know, it's... Yeah, okay, let's let's just go with, with war shows and, and, and not, you know, suggest that most people actually choose creative expression when they, they have something that they really want to put out there, you know. It's just war toys in general. It's just, again, the, the people who really make these things, you know, what she says about, you know, you didn't think, you, you know, you, you didn't think it through. You didn't think that it could be misused. That is correct. They should have stopped and thought. What are people actually going to do with this? This is going to kill a lot, you know. But there, there are feelings of, you know, per, you know, of, of safety, of, you know, protecting one's own country by creating the powerful weapon before the other, you know, and maybe hoping that by creating it, the other, you know, mutually assured destruction, the other side will be too scared to attack at all and such. But just yeah, this this idea that you know people who create weapons are jealous of women having babies. You know, I'm. Just, 
see when when you really get into to Terminator 2, it has a lot of dumb stuff in it. Man. I respect it as a great movie and I I love it as a movie. I like it as a Terminator movie. It just shouldn't have been. It just, you know, just have Terminator the the one movie and then make T2 and say, well, you know, it's similar to that other, but it's it's its own thing because that way we don't have to retcon stuff. And I'm getting sidetracked again. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.